Welcome back to Game Sweep, everybody. I'm your host, Damon Hatfield. I'm joined by Dan Stapleton, who is a PC gamer through and through. Anthony Gallegos, who has senioritis and will be surfing in Puerto Rico. <laughs> very, very soon. Yes, it's true. And Justin Davis, who loved, loved, loved Iron Man 3. Big fan. But we're not talking about any of those things right now. Maybe a little <laughs> bit of PC yeah. gaming, because we're talking about World of Warcraft. Yesterday, Activision announced subscribers continue to fall. They've lost another 1.3 million subscribers, leaving the number at 8 million now. Last year, uh, the, la the last big expansion, Mist of Pandaria, was released, right? At that time, yep. I think... No, no, I not at that time. In 2010, there were like 10 million subscribers. Right. And in 2012, at its peak, 12 million people were paying $15 a month to play well, World that's, of Warcraft. That's not strictly true, because, it, yeah. because in Asia, the, the pricing modeling okay. is different. And 12 million big, people were subscribing. Uh, yeah, yeah a, a big chunk of their, of their numbers are, are from Asian players. Either way, they were making hundreds upon hundreds of millions of dollars. Yeah, money was rolling in, and, and it still is. Still is. Still a lot of people paying every month to play yeah. this, but that number keeps dropping. Let me start this off by making a statement. You guys can either agree or disagree. Last year, 2012, was the year that the subscription MMO died. And World of Warcraft is, is the exception to that rule. It, it, is still, it is still going strong. I mean, they, yes, they lost you know, 1.3 million subscribers this year. They could continue to lose 1.3 million subscribers every year for the next five years and still be <laughs> bigger than anything else out there. Yeah, like I guarantee you Guild Wars probably doesn't even break 5 million players. Like, I bet you it doesn't. Yeah, probably not even. I feel like they that. would have said so. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, You know, to promote that if it, if it had. And I do agree that with your statement, at least partially, like, I think that making a subscription based MMO in general is crazy, but they can keep letting themselves do it because they have such sure. a legacy that's attached to it that they can just kind of ride that out. But I would be very surprised if the next World of Warcraft or whatever Titan turns out to be is a $15 a month subscription game. Yeah, there's like, no way it will be. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, the nice thing about free-to-play is twofold. From a business perspective, it makes you more money. You know, we've seen this over and over again. You know, Lord of the Rings Online revenues, um, they first said doubled, then they said tripled over where they were when it was a subscription MMO. And this isn't, you know, smaller companies like Turbine. Uh, I looked up just before we hopped in here that uh, the Old Republic sales uh, revenue doubled as well. So the Old Republic was an MMO on kind of shaky ground, not doing as well as EA wanted. They made it free to play, and it's making twice as much money now. But the second half of it is that it also, when it's done right, can be actually friendlier to the player than you know a fifteen dollar a month MMO. So it's kind of a win-win. Sure. I mean, I, I think that, that with with uh, you know comp comparing World of Warcraft to the Old Republic or uh, Lord of the Rings Online. I mean, it's it's kind of a non-starter because World of Warcraft is so established and has millions and millions of people who are com perfectly content to play to pay fifteen dollars a month. Um, whereas if they they would have to get many many more millions of people playing for free in order to generate that same amount of money. Um, well, I mean, I think so. The model that Lord of the Rings Online follows is if you play for free, you can piecemeal, like, I want to buy this zone, I want to buy that, that zone, I want to buy more outfits. Or if you pay $15 a month, you just get all of that anyway. Right. And so I absolutely think it's not a matter of if, but when, wow, we'll do something similar. Yeah, and, and you know, they, they have done something like that in that, you know, you can play up to, like, level 20 or level so. Level 20, yeah. Uh, that's um, a glorified demo. It is, it is. But, uh, but then, you know, you, you want access to more content, you buy more access to more content. And it, it is a similar model in a lot of ways. I think, I, so I, um, the one that I have the most experience with, I guess I did play a lot of Guild Wars too, but I really think that Turbine did such a good job with Lord of the Rings Online um, because, you know, there's a variety of things that you can pay money for, you know, fast travel and this and that, but the bulk of it is buying quest packs. Like, you buy the quest packs for a zone and you can sort of buy, like, okay, I want to spend, you know, $5 or $10 or $15 to have this new area to explore in. And if you... What I like about it is if I were to spend $15 a month just buying zones in that game, I have them forever. You know, if I stop spending, if I never spend another cent in the game, I still have everything that I paid for. Whereas if I pay $15 a month in WoW and then stop, then it's taken away from me. It's gone. And so when it's done right and when it's done, um, you know, really with sort of the big picture in mind, you want to keep your players happy, free-to-play um, doesn't need to necessarily be a dirty word, or I think sometimes core gamers really recoil about it, and yeah, I the, think there are examples of it done really well. Yeah, there's, there's still a, a very vocal group who really hates free-to-play, and that's, that's fine. You, mm -hmm. you know, if you don't like it, you, don't, you absolutely do not have to play a free-to-play game. Um, but there are, there are obviously millions upon millions of people who do, and, that's why, and they're willing to spend money on these games, so that's why they're so popular. People are just getting used to not paying for media in general, right? <clears throat> people, a lot of people don't pay for music anymore, 
they pay a subscription fee to Spotify. Right, and just listen to it, whatever they want as exactly. much as they want. I totally expect that like video games will just be like a subscription. You'll pay a subscription fee to some service, and you'll just have all the games to play, right? Yeah. Do you, if you don't, if set, like EA is absolutely noodling doing something like that, like pay an EA subscription fee and just Valve have access Steam, to stuff, just yeah. pay a fifteen dollar a month well, fee to Steam, and then you can just play all their games. Well, right? Steam's a little bit different. Steam because, might yeah. someday do that, but yeah, for now they make so much money anyway. Sure, they, they, they don't probably care. they probably have a, a package where you can do something like that. But but yeah, that's. That's a little hypothetical, but, but um, I mean, I think um, the other thing about WoW is that I don't know all this news, and I didn't read IGN's news story. I don't know if we did this too, but it's it's couched in like such negative terms. You see it on message boards, like oh, you know, WoW's dying, WoW's this. Blizzard didn't do enough. They didn't make these changes that would have kept the game alive. And like the thing is, this game's old. This it's eight it, years old. No, like, WoW is nothing but a, a huge success story, right? right? Even now, it's like, almost ten years old. There's still eight, you know, eight million yeah. people paying every month to play this thing. Like every game on the planet, every game ever has a shelf life. It has a life where it's fun, sure. it's fun, it's fun, and then eventually, no matter how awesome it is, you do move on. Most maybe, games maybe that, like StarCraft is the exception. Yeah. People will be playing that forever. But. For most games, that shelf life is a few hours, right? right? Yeah, that's true. Less than a, less than a week. Years. Like you play it for a week and then you're done. And so I think about people talk about how Mists of Pandaria didn't reinvigorate the franchise the way that they wanted or thought, and I'm like, this is just like this game. They, it's a graceful degradation now, as graceful as Blizzard could make it. Absolutely. Like, so it's almost 10 years old. The world changes a lot in 10 years. The video game industry changes a lot. People's lives change. A lot of people are, what, in their teens and early 20s when they start playing WoW 10 years ago. They're 30-something now, and they don't have as much time to play an MMO. Like, it just makes, it makes sense. It's not, it's not, like, as dire a situation as, as uh, many people make out to. And there, there are so many free-to-play alternatives right now. They probably sure. have a, a big problem getting new people in uh, to replace the people that leave, or bigger yeah. than they used to. Uh, and a lot of these these free to play games are are offering you know uh, you can you can jump from one free to play game to another and and have a good time and never pay anything. Yeah, so, I still so. don't think I've played a free to play MMO though that is as good as World of Warcraft. Oh yeah, I'll still say that. I mean, like, yeah, I mean that's that's virtually impossible to to I, but just the fact that they have been reiterating iterating on this this you know this model for eight years and have have uh, you know ironed out so many kinks that any any. MMO that launches, you know, a few a few years ago is still not going to have that level of polish. And I'll clarify that that is Guild Wars Two is not a free to play MMO. Right. Well, that's so, what I was going to say. Is yeah, I like yeah. I like Guild Wars more than WoW, but sure, it's but it's not a free to play. No, right. and it, and it's also not. Uh, uh, I think the moment to moment gameplay and sort of the world is a lot more interesting than WoW's, but there's not the breadth of content there yeah. by any means. So here's one one question I have. Do you think that if WoW went free to play, it would help or hurt the community of players there? Yeah. I, Help I, I, in what way? That you so, would grow the community? They could get more people, but you're saying that it might bring in... Yeah, maybe, maybe the people that are paying like, would, would resent that. I, yeah. Well, well my, my concern is that when, when I'm paying a subscription fee to a game, I'm, I, I feel like I am kind of obligated to play it. Uh, I, I will come back again and again because I want to get my money's worth out of it. Right. If I'm not paying for it and I lose some momentum for any reason or I get distracted by something shiny, um, I will maybe not go back. And you know, the, my if, you know, if I don't have a guild or something that, that's keeping me there, uh, and you know, constantly pulling me back in, uh, I I don't feel like I ha I have to go back to to get my money's worth. And I think that a lot of a lot of that is is present in WoW and keeping that momentum going. Yeah, I could see it making less stable guilds and that sort of thing where it's like people aren't there isn't like the hardcore. You have people that just join and flake out all the time. And I think there would be far far more people. In I mean, that's yeah. that's that's the well, obviously free, free to play model. But in terms of like hardcore, like are you gonna make friends? Like a lot of people that are in WoW now, it's at social relationships. It's not even the game. It's a big, huge, fancy chat room. Yeah, in a lot of ways. Where yeah. like these are real relationships that they've formed with people and real friendships, and that's what keeps them in the game night after night. And free to play is a little bit more flaky, like you said, or uh, you know people might come and go and not have that same sort of attachment. A little bit more transient. And it also comes down to what they charge for in free to play. Are they yeah. going to charge to make guilds and stuff? Then you know, right. it's, it's just the devil really is in the details. It like is. free to play can be implemented really well or really poorly. Yeah. The reason why I single out 2012 as the year that the subscription MMO died is because of the Old Republic. Mm -hmm. uh, it has arguably the the biggest license in the world, right? The Star Wars license, and the game was good, right? It was. Any good game with the biggest license in the world should be a success. But it wasn't. Yeah, I mean, I, I think well, there was even well, old success. There was an old MMO. I mean, an old game scoop where I said that that game would be free to play within a year, and it was totally ugly. Everyone knew that that was true. 
Yeah, I mean, th that was the only reason that game came out with a subscription fee is because there were investors who wanted a return on investment immediately. And then after they got that, they're like, okay, how can we actually make this? Are there any subscription MMOs left besides WoW? Rift. Rift, Rift is, is a subscription. Big one. Is Terra what about subscription? Eve? Uh, is Eve online? Yeah. Eve, Eve online is also a subscription. Yeah. Which, in that, it, Eve's as I understand yeah. it, that's the only MMO that whose subscriber numbers have grown every year. Considerably Slowly smaller than WoW, but it keeps growing. Yeah, and they're yeah. like 500,000, so it's nothing yeah. to sneeze at. No, no. Yeah, not anymore, but it it's, wasn't for a long time, right? right? Like, they sort of scraped by, and then slowly they hit some, like, hockey stick point. Eve Online is its own... They're, like, on another plane. That, yeah. that, that stuff is crazy. There probably is, you know, and it's... So if there's a free-to-play MMO, like, everyone categorizes a game like Lord of the Rings Online as free-to-play, but it has a subscription option. Yeah. Well, and all we, the free-to-play games have subscription right. options. And I'm just saying we don't have clarity into how many people are playing those subscription fees. They just get lumped into this free-to-play free category when there could still be you know, 500,000 to a million or maybe even more people paying for it every month. Yeah, so. Star, uh, like Star Wars, The Old Republic, even though it's free-to-play now, definitely has the subscription model where it's like unlimited access to dungeons and stuff like that, whereas if you don't pay, you get yeah. restricted access. Well, and, and your UI is crippled, which is a big mistake they make. They, they, they limit the number of, of ability slots yeah. you can have, which which that, that just in, in, enrages people, and rightfully so. <laughs> sure. Before we go, do we think, realistically, will World of Warcraft ever go free-to-play? Ever? Yes. Yes. Yeah, eventually. I mean, that's the but end game for that game. It's just, like I said earlier, it's a matter of when, not if. I could see it happening after they release their next MMO. Whatever Titan turns out to be, mm. as they transition to that and they want to support that, that they could then shift World of Warcraft what's, to be free What's the time frame on that? A year, Good question. two years? When it's done. Yeah, they Traditional even, Blizzard timing of when it's They've never even shown it. Yeah, they haven't said what it is. Yeah. Mm. So. They just, even, we just know that it's an MMO. Even on Blizzard time, yeah. Titan has been... Like, I can't even imagine what's going on <laughs> over there. Like, they've been working... When did they announce it? Like, or when was it leaked? 2008? Like two, two, I don't know. Yeah, a long time ago. So I would say we'll hear about it this year, finally, at mm -hmm. BlizzCon, because they're doing another BlizzCon this year. We'll hear about it, and we'll find out what it is. But we won't see it for maybe a year or two. Yeah. That'd be my guess. Thanks, guys. Stay tuned for more from your friends at IGN Games Group.